Hello, wonderful viewers. Welcome to today's edition of Being the Help I Needed. My name is Theophilus Lamte, and you are on the Theophilus Lamte Ministries channel on YouTube and Facebook. You just want to subscribe and click the notification button and do well to send the link to as many people as possible. This might be the reason why God connected you to this channel. So somebody will also be able to benefit from the things that you are benefiting from. A special welcome goes out to our first time listeners. We pray that the good Lord will keep and bless you and your life will never be the same again. My prayer today is that nobody listening to this broadcast will leave the same. Yokes will be broken, burdens will be lifted, and transformation will be the hallmark of our life. Shall we say a word of prayer? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name. We give you thanks. We bless you because you are God. We thank you for the breath of life that you gave us this morning. Not everybody wakes up and when they go to sleep, not everybody wakes up and even feeling healthy. Not everybody is able to go through the whole day without any form of challenge here or so. But because of your mercies, we are alive, we are well, and we are strong. We say thank you and may your name forever be praised. We pray that the hearts of the people gathered here will be receptive to your word. Your word will go forth unhindered. And at the end of it all, you take all the glory in heaven and you bless your children here on earth. We love you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Beloved, welcome once again to the Faithful Atlanta Ministries. And this program is dubbed Being the Help I Needed. We've been dealing with the image and likeness of God for a few weeks now. I'm sure that it has blessed your heart. We are going to start a new series, if I should call it. And this series is, is very dear to my heart because when God started to teach and explain to me what this um, means, I realized that it is actually the pivot of our very existence here on earth. What am I talking about? Somebody is already guessing. I'm going to talk about purpose. Purpose. Purpose can be defined in so many ways. Purpose can be defined as a person's resolve or a person's determination for doing whatever they do. There's a reason behind the things we do and that is what we call purpose. The reason why we create things, the reason why we act the certain ways we act, that is what we call purpose. And we learned this or we picked these instincts from God himself because God was very purposeful when he created man. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And there was something distinct that God wanted to achieve with man. He said, let them multiply, let them um, be fruitful, let them have dominion. The dominion mandate where God was going to replicate himself into man and make man have dominion, just like God himself has dominion, and making man a representative or an ambassador was the purpose for which man was created. So if you don't live to fulfill that purpose, the original intention of God has been truncated, and that is what we call failure. So failure is not the lack of amassing wealth or the lack of having resources available to you, making name and, and being famous and all of that. No, failure simply means that you have not been able to live the purpose for which you were created. So if a car was created to move people from one place to the other and the car never gets to move, no matter how beautiful the car had been created, uh, that been manufactured or the car has been produced, the car has failed. So you see, failure goes beyond the physical outlook. Failure is simply not being able to achieve the purpose for which you were brought into that space. So if a football was produced that it would be played on the field by a couple of people, and the football never gets played. The football has failed, although the football came out probably looking very beautiful. So it is not enough to be a human being. You must fulfill the purpose for which God brought you here on earth. And like I said, purpose is the fulcrum, the pivot of our very existence here on earth. So if we never get to understand purpose from God's perspective, and I'm talking about God because you can only know your purpose from the manufacturer's manual. And God is the manufacturer of man. So if we never go to God and find out the purpose for which he decided to create us, we will live life anyhow. And at the end of the day, when the script is presented before us, we'll realize that we are deviated even before we entered into the space. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. So we are going to be looking at purpose for a couple of weeks. But you see, 
It's not enough to know the purpose. And I'm going to show you something from next week. And that is actually my main aim for this particular um, topic, purpose. How to be purposeful as a believer. There are so many channels through which somebody can become purposeful. Most of them are as a result of external factors because somebody um, can become purposeful out of determination. Somebody can become purposeful out of external influences where people are urging you on and people are encouraging you. All those things are beautiful, but there is nothing as powerful as the intrinsic factor that comes from within. You don't need a lot of motivation. In fact, you don't need any motivation to be able to um, walk in that particular type of um, reason for being purposeful. And that is where we are going to stay a lot of the time from next week. And I call that the pathway of becoming a purposeful believer. So there are pathways to becoming purposeful. But for a believer, you cannot become purposeful outside of what I will be talking about from next week we will talk about it a little extensive next week and then we will from um the, the weeks after we will take real case studies in the bible so we will see how people lived purposeful here on earth and then it will become a yardstick or it will become a marker for you and it will become a marker for me because no matter what you do if you fail to live a purposeful life you have failed absolutely in life so people would stand before the throne um, room of god one day and they will say lord we cast out demons in your name we prophesied in your name we healed the sick and then the response will be that my father did not know you so it means that in the midst of all the activities that the people claimed that they lived they did not live a purposeful life so you can have a lot of activity but not be productive so the fact that you are having a lot of action or a lot of activity does not mean that it's translating into productivity productivity is beyond getting into action so you can be marking time you are sweating you are losing a lot of weight but you are not covering a lot of mileage when i say marking time you are at the same spot and you are very active but if what is really required of you is that you will cover distance, marking time is actually not the way to go. So that is why we are going to stay with purpose for quite some time. And then we will see the pathway that um, God has designed for us to be purposeful. And as we look at this pathway for the believer to become successful, you will see that purpose or actually success for the believer is not in amassing wealth is not in about the things that we do for ourselves is nothing about ourselves and everything for what we were created to live for so purpose for a believer or a successful believer lives with that intention or that mindset of impact you are impacting places or you are impacting people that is the reason why we are created so you see a lot of people in the kingdom of god make some very um weird statements god bless me so that i'll be a blessing to the kingdom you are deceiving yourself my brother because there is a last inside of you that is making you pray such prayers you are not really there to affect the kingdom of god if that is the kind of prayer you are praying, you can affect the kingdom of God in your level where you are now. And then when God sees or when God ascertains the fact that you are faithful, God begins to increase you. So stop praying for enlargement of coast or increase or abundance when you are not faithful with the little. You will just want to go and check out our YouTube recording about the parable of the faithful servant. I think that one will do justice to what I'm trying to talk about so a believer who is successful and has purpose in mind we seek to maximize our impact on people and places so god will send us to territories because god is interested in winning that particular territory for the kingdom and that is all you live for god will send you to particular places because god is interested in you winning the souls of those particular people for the kingdom of god and it's nothing about you I'm sure you are beginning to get a little um, idea about the pathway to living a purposeful life. In fact, let me just um, tell you what that pathway is. And I said the pathway, the one we'll be dealing with from next week is intrinsic. It comes from within. It is called self-denial. 
self-denial or dying to self. And next week, I will prove to you that our greatness or living a purposeful life is directly proportional or connected to the degree to which we are ready to die to self. So the degree to which we are ready to die to self would infer how we would live a purposeful life. So you see that purpose is nothing to do with us. It's all about what we are living for. So if you want to really live a purposeful life, this is where it begins from. Self-denial. Death to self. But I said today is just an introductory stage. I want us to appreciate the fact that God is a purposeful God. And so there is a reason why he brought us here into this space. And if we can fulfill that space, we need to find out the pathways that we can use to be able to get to that end. Else, we will live our life and miss the real reason why we found ourselves in this place called earth. And I said purpose is the reason why people do the things they do. Purpose is a, a person's resolve for all their the kind of determination that they have to do the things that they are doing. So purpose is really, really important. At the end of the day, you will be judged based on the purpose for which you were released here on earth. So if you don't find out the purpose for which God brought you here on earth, you can do everything aside your purpose and you would have failed. So when God is going to tell you one day that faithful servant will come home, like Paul said, that I can't wait to go and receive my crown because I have fought a good fight. How many of us can speak like Paul? Because Paul knew clearly his assignment. He knew exactly what he was supposed to do. When he encountered Jesus, his Lord, I am at the road on his way to Damascus. And then he had that encounter. He heard clearly, he said, you will suffer for my, you will suffer many things for my sake. So Paul knew right from that time that suffering was part of his pathway to becoming successful. So there was a time when the prophet um, Agabus told them that the one whose belt I have tied to myself is going to be bound where he's going. And Paul, knowing his very script about how he was going to become purposeful in life, said that I know that my spirit has already been bound in heaven. That means I am not careful about the things that I go through that you are calling suffering for the sake of the kingdom. In fact, I have lost everything. I voluntarily gave away everything for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is not the time for me to back out. So the prophecy Agabus gave was excellent, but Paul was resolved. Paul was determined, and that we call purpose, to fulfill why he had been called into the ministry. No wonder he became the greatest apostle of his time. He documented two thirds of the New Testament. And if Paul decided not to live a purposeful life, he would not have achieved this aim. And I said, purpose, real purpose, is connected to the degree to which you are ready to deny yourself, to the degree to which you are ready to die to yourself. There is a lot of self-centeredness, and that is the canker the devil has put into the system. Because the devil knows that the greatest pathway to a believer becoming successful is self-denial, he has brought the, the code which will make us not be able to live a successful life, and that is self. So you see that the problem we have as believers is always got to do with self. What does he take me for? Who do they think I am? And I want this, and I want that. That it was the nature of the devil before he was thrown out of the space where he used to enjoy in heaven. So you see, because he knew what he did, that got him cut out of purpose. He knows that when he gets you to do the same, you would also fall in the same trap. But you see, the devil is very crafty, and that is why we are not supposed to engage the devil in any discourse whatsoever. Bible tells us categorically that we are supposed to resist the devil, not to have a discourse with him. But unfortunately, we feel or we deceive ourselves to the degree where we think we are intelligent, we know how to handle the devil, and then we are falling victims every now and then. So we are supposed to resist him and not to have a discourse with him. I said the devil is very crafty, he's very intelligent, and he's very swift. So, so he knows how to go around what he is looking for to get you to commit yourself. So the devil is working on making people become self-centered, to making people become selfish. And we bought 
into the devil's scheme. Today, look around you. Everywhere you go, it's about self. Every prayer is about self. Every spiritual exercise, the fasting, the giving, is about self. People are giving because they want to put up an appearance out there. That is what we call reputation. Reputation can actually be acted out. But character is from within. Character is spiritual. So a lot of us are putting up reputation to deceive um, the masses. But you cannot deceive God. You cannot deceive God. Whatever you sow, you will reap. So the reason behind the spiritual exercises you are engaging in will eventually come to bear. So all the fasting you are, you are going through, to what end? What are you looking for? It's about self-aggrandizement. You want to have this. You want God to bless you with that. You want to have all the resources to prove to people that yes, you have arrived. It's nothing to do with the kingdom. That is why there's a lot of strife. There's a lot of competition, even in the very place of the kingdom of God, where we're supposed to be serving God and propagating the gospel. Now, there is a lot of competition and there is a lot of tension in there. People are refusing to go to church because the things they see in the church are worse than the things that they see outside there. What is happening to our generation? Where is this generation heading to? Are these the things that our forefathers did with the kingdom when they received the gospel? And if this is the way we are handling the gospel that they, they shed their blood to pass on to us, what is the guarantee that we have what it takes to be able to hand it over to the next generation? Do we have the tenacity? Do we have the ability to be able to hand over the gospel to the next generation? We lack purpose. And the reason why we lack purpose is because we love ourselves too much. And Jesus said, if you love your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you would get it in this life and the life after. There is everything to die for as far as purposeful life here on earth is concerned. You can never be purposeful as a believer if you are not ready to go through that channel of self-denial. If you want to affect the kingdom, you must die to self. If you must be wealthy for the sake of helping people, that means you are dying to yourself. Listen to what I said. You are going to be wealthy because you want to help people. That means you are not becoming wealthy for yourself. All the wealth you are looking for is so that you can affect much more people for the kingdom of God. Is it not through that corridor of self-denial or dying to self? But if you don't have this agenda locked up in your mind, you will chase everything here on earth, which is material for yourself. And in the realms of the spirit, when you begin to clamor for all these things, it brings you a lot of weight. Sooner than later, you will sink. So a pastor of mine told me that there is a reason why the fishermen swim like this. They push their hand forward and then they move all the way and bring it to their side. What it means is that I receive everything or I go for everything and then I spread them all across. And then the little that is left comes to me. And when the little comes to me, it propels me forward. But if I go and clamor for everything and I bring everything to myself that way, what I'm doing is that I am going to begin to sink because there will be too much weight. Because I'm not trying to give anybody, I'm collecting from everybody and I'm rather putting it to my chest. I'll begin to sink. Those of you who know how to swim and who know the, 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 the techniques of swimming, you will be able to identify what I'm talking about. This is life. So to move forward in life, to be successful in life, to be able to do something meaningful in life, you must live a purposeful life. Living a purposeful life means that you are dying to yourself. Nothing about you matters, but everything about the maker or your creator is what you live for. So you don't live for yourself anymore. It's not about what you want, what you feel, what you think. No. It's as if you don't even have a brain anymore because you are controlled by God himself. That is a difficult life to live. I'm not going to lie to you. But that is the way you can become purposeful. So you can, you can identify already how a lot of believers have been swayed. Because this is not the kind of mindset that we have. This is not the kind of programming that we have. We are being pushed. We are being spoken to in church. And rather, it's making us more materialistic than we can imagine. We are in a generation full of religious, materialistic people. 
We are using religion to clamor for the things of the world. And Bible said categorically, and he said, and he warned us, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. There is a reason why God said that. And if, if, if we begin to go into the nitty gritty of self-denial, I would explain to you what seek ye first the kingdom of God means. Seek ye first the kingdom of God is the pathway to death. Seek ye first the kingdom of God is the pathway to self-denial. Because as you seek ye first the kingdom of God, that means all the things that Jesus said that you have need for. In fact, the Bible said, I know you have need of the clothes, the food, and all the other things, the materials. But then he said, I know that you have need for them. Yes, I do. The Gentiles also have need for them. But this is the path of the Gentiles. They go for all the materials. But I'm telling you that as a kingdom person, as the pathway for death has been created for the believer to live a purposeful life, I said, don't go after the materials. Look for me first. As you look for God first and everything that concerns him, that means you are going to live or forfeit the seeking of the materials that is dying to self. Because if God knows that you have need of the clothes and he's saying that, don't look for the clothes first. What, what is he telling you? Deny yourself. If God knows that you need food to eat and he's telling you that, forget about the food, look for me first. It is dying to self. If God knows that you need um, the car, the house, and all those other things, you need the marriage, the children, and God is telling you that, don't go after those things. He said, seek me first. That is the pathway of death. But this is the beauty of it. As long as you seek for God first and the things of the kingdom, he swore, he said, I will add all, other, all these other things to you. So the degree to which you will receive the materials of the earth is directly proportional to the level of death that you give to yourself in line with seeking God first. So the people that are seeking God with all their heart and they are kingdom oriented, you see that the materials come to them as a bonus and they are not chasing the materials. And the reason why God said we should seek him first and he will add the materials to us is because there is a venom in the materials. There is a poison in the materials. If you go after that first, it begins to control you. You become a slave to it. So the Gentiles have been enslaved by the materials. They wake up every morning and the first thing that drives them is the materials. But God does not want us to use that route. God wants us to be controlled by the kingdom of heaven so that we would rather have control over the materials. Mind you, the purpose for which God created us is that we would have dominion over everything of the earth. Believer, why are the things of the earth now controlling you? Why are the elements of the earth rather having dominion over you? Why is money directing the, 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 the course of your life? Why is that car that you need the reason why you are committing adultery? Why is it because you want to get your school fees paid the reason why you are lying with a married man and you know it's against your Christian principles? You are seeking the world ahead of the kingdom of God. So you are not ready to die to self. So when you seek the materials, that means you are preserving your life. And Bible said you will lose it. But if you seek the kingdom of God, you are doing everything to die to self and live for the purpose of God. And I said, it's a very difficult pathway, but that is what will make us purposeful in life. There is a lot of conferences that we organize. We do a lot of business programs for a lot of church executives and all that. But I can tell you, there is a subtle agenda there and the devil is profiting for it because we are trying to empower our executives or business people in our church so that they will be able to give more seed. They will be able to sow a lot more seed and contribute to the kingdom agenda. The church belongs to God. You cannot manipulate anything the church belongs to god and god said i will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail it is god's church so allow god to be god treat everybody the same don't deceive yourself that you are trying to raise millionaires and billionaires it is for our own selfish interest how many of the millionaires and billionaires that we have in our church are God fearing? How many of them are living right? How many of them are making their money genuinely? 
A lot of us know the source of wealth of the people in our church, but because we've chosen the path of, of self-preservation, going for the materials, we don't even have the moral right to even caution them against the life they are living. Today, may God have mercy on us. May God show us grace. May God have mercy on us. May God show us grace. The devil is really profiting from our lustful desires. Today, may deliverance hit us in a way we will never be able to recover from. May the word of God that proceeds out of my mouth be spirit and life, just like the word of God said. The things that we speak are spirit and life. May it bring healing. May it bring deliverance. May it bring transformation. That from today, the reason, the purpose for which you are organizing the programs will be God-centered. And not so that people will get breakthroughs and come and sow seed. We are now merchandising the gospel of God. We are now merchandising the anointing. So the reason why we are fasting and praying that God will move in a spectacular way is because, like we would normally hear, sow into the anointing. Why are we supposed to encourage you to sow into the anointing? If really God is there, when people see what is happening, they will not be coerced. They will do as the Spirit leads them. Can we begin to lead people to act based on the Spirit and stop playing psychology on them? Man of God, woman of God, be careful. We are gradually living for self-preservation. That means we cannot become purposeful in life at the end of the day. And that means we will be told that workers of iniquity get away from me i know you not may that not be your portion may we not spend all these years on earth just to hear that negative statement no i want to be like paul where before i i exit the surface of this earth i will say that i have fought a good fight i cannot wait to receive my crown may god help me to die to self may god help me that i will live for the kingdom and the kingdom agenda may god help me that i will seek him first above all other things and at the end of the day his word is sure he will add all other things to it may the deception going on die now in the name of jesus may kingdom people begin to accept the path of death the path of self-denial the path of sacrifice to become purposeful in life you see kingdom professionals do not define success in terms of money or job or status they do not even seek to maximize their income or their security or their status or to advance their career there is one thing that kingdom professionals or kingdom minded people live for they live to maximize the impact they have on people and places that is all we are called to do it's about impact and it's not about self and to be impactful that means you've charted the path of self-denial or what I call um, dying to self. This is the challenge of our generation where everybody is after the materials, where we are chasing God for one reason and one reason only. He will answer our materialistic prayers. How many of us organize prayer meetings and all we are asking is that God use me to be a blessing to my generation? No. If it's not God, give me a car. If it's not God, give me a wife. If it's not God, give me a child. Then it's probably the most obvious one we've seen around. Lord, grant me a visa to travel overseas for greener pastures. May God plant you by the rivers of living waters where you will bear your fruits in season and your, fruits will not, and your leaves will not wither. I beg your pardon. May you be planted by the rivers of living waters. It is where God plants you that determines whether you'll be fruitful or not. It is not where you decide to find yourself. Seek the face of God. Let God tell you or show you where he has designed for you. Chances are that wherever you are trying to run to, the places you are trying to pay so much money to get to, your gold and your diamond are not located there. That is also a path of self-denial that you need to go through. 
because it looks as if that is where the materials are going to um, be available to you. But that is not what God wants you to do. So you see, we are going after the self-preservation bit where every decision a believer is taking now is because of materials. All the reasons we have for attending church service now is materialistic. All the reasons we have for the revival meeting is that you will, hit, you will get a prophetic word, that you will marry, you have a child. Materialistic throughout. What happened to self-denial? So you see, the devil has succeeded in fulfilling his agenda and implementing his plan. He has brought selfishness and self-centeredness in a very modernized way, which is that I am very determined in life. I am very um, hardworking. I am very um, determined to do something with my life so that I can affect the kingdom. You don't have to get materials to affect the kingdom. Don't, don't get it wrong. No, you don't have to. The faithful servant, I said, was because the Lord saw their various abilities and he gave them based on their various abilities. So what ability do you have? That is upon that, that, that pedigree. That is what God is going to deal with you. So don't bite more than you can chew. Don't be overly um, aggressive. Don't be anxious. Paul wants us in Philippians. Be anxious about nothing. So you see, the reason why there's a lot of anxiety is because we are going for the materials against seeking God first. And that is why sicknesses are increasing in our day and age. There is a lot of frustration in the system because of the aggressive nature at which we are chasing the materials. The system has been structured. The institutions have been positioned in such a way that it will steal the God element and make you go after the materials. May that not be your portion. May God deliver this generation from this curse so that we will not lose a whole generation to the devil. May we stand firm and die to self so we can be purposeful. Bible said, unless a grain of wheat falls down to the ground and dies, it abides alone. You see, it must fall down to the ground and die. And that is what my wife explained to me the other day. He said the process of the, 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 the grain of wheat deciding to fall down from that altitude all the way to the ground to die is the principle of humility there cannot be effective self-denial or living a sacrificial life if you've not gone through the channel of humility. Humility simply means that I know this is where I belong, but deliberately I decide to live it so I can calm down and be useful. And that is what Jesus did. He said he counted it not robbery. He knew that he was deity. He handed it over so that he can calm down and then be obedient and be humble and die to fulfill the purpose for which he came. If Jesus decided to preserve his life, salvation would not have come for humanity. You and I would not be saved. So Jesus lived a sacrificial life. Jesus lived a life of self-denial. And we will look at him extensively in one of the um, illustrations that I said I will use in the subsequent weeks about self-denial as the pathway to a purposeful life. I'm pretty sure that you've heard something, you've, you've been able to pick a word or two so far and it's been a blessing to you. I pray for you that God himself will minister to you in a special way. I pray that you will subscribe to this channel, you will invite a friend, you will click on the notification button and that is how the gospel gets spread across the nations. Till we meet again next week. My name is Theophilus Lamte, and this has been Being the Help I Needed, and it's on the YouTube and Facebook handle as Theophilus Lamte Ministries. You want to connect with us, you want to send us um, a text message, a, a comment on our YouTube channel or Facebook, we would love to hear from you. The perspectives you have is always a blessing to hear from you. To anyone and everyone who has been a blessing to us, supporting us in your diverse ways through prayer, resources, whatever it is, I say may the God that has called me to do the things I do bless you and exceed your expectations in Jesus' mighty name and i believe you are shouting an hallelujah to jesus next week we will look at the pathway 
of self-denial to being a purposeful person here on earth. Stay and stick around and be safe. It's bye-bye for now.